What's going on, guys? It's Frito here for your Overwatch. The midseason patch finally came out. We're going to take a look at how it has rearranged the meta. Remember, our tier list is always for the actual average level of play. We know what the pros and the top 500s are playing, but what's going to do best for the average player and how you should go about adjusting to this new meta game? Blizzard's balance has been pretty bad right now, to be honest. I'm hoping season two will be better, but how do we survive until then? All that after this quick message. Do you happen to use the internet? Of course you do. If you're online you gotta have a vpn personally i like to either travel or take my technology into public places connect to dodgy wi-fi but thanks to today's video sponsor surfshark i can do it safely with peace of mind as well as a lot of other cool features surfshark vpn or virtual private network keeps your identity and personal information safe when using the internet but beyond security there's a fun side to surfshark vpn as well where you'll get to access content that otherwise would be region gated Often gamers are anime fans, that's a common one that is available in Asian regions, but not in the West. A quick click of the button allows you to virtually transport to the other side of the world and get use out of those subscriptions you're paying for. If you use the internet, you got to get a VPN just for the peace of mind alone. Avoid DDoS attacks and cyber criminals. Encrypt your data. Be safe out there. Surfshark's got an outrageous deal. If you click the link in the description or use our code, your Overwatch, you'll get 83% off and three months free. And with a 30 day money back guarantee, there's no risk to at least try it out. With the protection it offers, you're not going to want to live without it anyway. Take our link in the description right now to check out Surfshark or use our code YOURUROVERWATCH to get 83% off and three months free. First up, we'll start with the tank category. With the introduction of Kiriko and some major tuning adjustments to Diva Zarya, similar to how Zarya was the easiest, most effective solo queue tank before because she was incredibly hard to punish and had high damage, everything you kind of need from a low teamwork, non-committal, solo queue kind of carry type of play, Roadhog is all of that. And since Kiriko's in the game, he can't even really get punished completely by the disables that used to roll him. So whether it's his take a breather, allowing him to just tank on the objective forever on the front line, his one shots to destroy squishies, or it being very difficult to counter him with how many ways you can save him and bail him out. Hog's got good matchups against almost everything in the game, but of course doesn't provide anything for his team. That's where ranged characters specifically are going to get lines of of sight into your backline now and the things you're going to have to focus on when picking your tank is whether you're going to try to get the most kills you can from your position or you're going to try to counter the enemy's dps because ultimately you only can be in one spot at one time and due to the way they've tweaked the overwatch 2 matchmaker oftentimes you kind of need to pop off from this position to have a chance to win so you got to do a lot just based on the way you get matched in the game aside from the meta right like we watch the pros play when everything's even you have two teams that are at the same same level but matchmaking in overwatch is almost intentionally imbalanced and that also plays into why roadhog is going to be s tier because you kind of just need to do the most from your position and not rely on having an even team that being said though getting into the a tier you will see two shield tanks winston and sigma these are characters that can drop shields and barriers to really influence the ranged hit scan battle in a big way. Winston Primaling can go isolate an enemy sojourn and chase her down or any other ranged character. He, of course, gets hard marked by Roadhog and one of the top DPS picks right now, Reaper, as well. But avoiding those threats, Winston is the best tank teammate in the game overall right now. While he can get countered by D.Va and is really going to struggle to dive into Hog, when he's not countered, he can hard carry. Counterpicking is a way too punishing in the game now after they've incentivized swapping and reducing the punishment for holding your ult significantly, I think it's damaged the tank category in a big way that they need to revert. While I was happy from the effects of the keeping your ult charge for the DPS, because they have so many characters to swap to and the role itself is so with a high skill floor and a lot of the characters anyway, it's really damaged the way the tank matchups work in the game right now. So because of that, don't expect to be able to stay on your tank. If the enemy swaps, you have to swap. Counterpicking is back in Overwatch 2, unfortunately, basically because of that. Because if they swap, you have a bad matchup in the neutral and you don't swap, you'll eventually just lose. Whereas before you could leverage at least a bit of an ult advantage to punish them swapping now you can't so you better be on the right pick all the time and it kind of sucks that that's how that's panned out but i hope they look at that for season two orisa and sigma have decent matchups against hog they both have stuns to take him out of breather which is kind of his 
most OP ability in my opinion, being able to run away while healing and fortifying himself. Stunning him out of that is a really big deal. And they're both tanky and survivable enough in their own right that they don't just instantly get rolled by him. And in fact, Orisa has a lot of buttons to just straight up frontline against him. Sigma is a little bit more punishable, but as long as you play your cooldowns correctly, you can survive getting onslaughted by Hog. Down into the B tier now, I'd say these characters are good based on your skill and if the enemy isn't running the top meta picks or has some weaknesses in their comp overall. Although D.Va can hard mark Winston, I'm really struggling to see what she's good at anymore. Like, I just feel like she's back down to where she was before in the relationship of the entire game where if you want to have a shotgun type character, just play Roadhog. And if you want to dive, you probably should play Winston. With enough skill, I think you can raise her, but it's tough for me. She's kind of a neutral pick and why she's kind of like in the middle of the whole tier list, more or less. Zarya being a fair character now, like I like where they balanced her. It's just that there's easier things above her. Her play style is great for the game. A lot of great interactions, having a cleanse and building up charge and saving teammates from all sorts of stuff. Zarya's a good character, just isn't broken enough to be higher on the list. I would say there's some surprising matchups and plays and opportunities for the rush in characters like Reinhardt and Junker Queen in the right circumstance. I keep going 50-50 on whether I think these characters get countered by Hog or not, because Junker Queen, if she gets chain stunned, let's say, from a hook into a follow-up, okay, then Hog can counter her. But at the same time, I think if that doesn't happen and she life steals on your team, well, then Hog kind of loses that big burst that's supposed to win him the game. And while Hog is definitely more durable than Junker Queen, she might be faster to help the team rush in and overwhelm you if you commit with her, of course. But if you're playing slow, then yeah, it's not going to work. Same thing for Reinhardt. Everyone's got to be in at the right time, coordinating around. And I think it's going to be tough to find teammates that play the Rhine or Junker Queen comp good enough for it to go up. I see the potential, but I'm going to be hesitant to suggest it to go with random teammates. The playstyles above in the tier list are easier. Bottom of the tier list, we're going to say these dive tanks just aren't good enough. I think this is a bit of a hot take, okay? I think Ball is just straight up the worst tank in the game and it's not even close like I do think Doomfist is better because he has higher skill expression and a stun and at least that can have some interactions to do something and he has like some speed to play with Ball's playstyle was about disruption and splitting things off and characters are either durable or mobile and there's not much separation to be gained and then you get into a fight that you just don't have the damage or durability yourself to withstand and I'm struggling to see what ball can fight at any point. Keeping in mind, Hog has over like a thousand effective HP and a shotgun. Ball needs to be able to roll in and out. And yeah, he can get up to some high HP numbers, but he doesn't have the same damage to stand and deliver like Hog can. So you're doing all this movement just to go in and the dive needs to be so well synced for it to work. It's hard to know what the heck he's going to do. And I'm willing to bet that over these next few weeks, they're going to get data that Ball is just getting dumpstered. He's already a hard hero for people to play because he moves so much faster than his team. So syncing with your team takes some game sense anyway, or they just don't sync with you when they should. They don't commit like they're supposed to. You really have to get a pile driver into and a limb for it to work in there's too many buttons to escape that style of engage that you're better off just playing Winston and cycling some support cooldowns into you and manipulating lines of sight and just playing sort of a slower tank battle rather than a I need to go all in style because again characters like Reinhardt or Junker Queen can do that just straightforward with pressing W and have more damage in their hands just normally so that's the whole tank category in a nutshell now let's take a look at the supports I think you should be playing right now it pains me to put Moira in S tier because I think she is just such a noob trap character that I don't like being good in the game. The reason she's good is that you can just escape. What Moira is, is a skill check type character. If the enemy can't land abilities on you or headshot, there's a lot of fights you will just out DPS and you'll rank up for the wrong reasons. That's what sucks is like there's a very little actual good overwatch going on with this character. And once you get to the higher tiers, you're going to see that she's not very good up there. You're kind of stuck utilizing a boosted playstyle, to be honest, which wins with poor fundamentals when the enemy's fundamentals are just bad too. All right, now that being said, Kiriko is the other character that is also incredibly survivable in the support category. She's nuts, of course, because she can 
interact with everything that I said earlier that's good. So if you think about Winston Dives or Roadhog, whether it's saving your tank at the brink of death or the target that they're going to go on or the target that the enemy's tank is going on, tanks that are good at standing and delivering inside a Kitsune rush are great. Or whether it's a whole hog to boop the enemies out of their rush or the Winston bubble down to deny the lines of sight as they try to use it. This is how that meta goes. And with Kiriko's damage potential and dueling, there's a lot of picks that need to just be straight up afraid of her. While her overall game-wide damage is really low and you don't want to just focus on damage, but you do want to focus on picks. And so because of that, there's a lot of DPS picks and the DPS category in general, I feel, has just really lowered its overall carry potential just because Kiriko exists. Because she can fight back so well, play the support game and never be out of position. And ultimately, and I want to get into balance talk and suggestions in a future video, but her healing is too high and too good at range when it was supposed to be her downfall, I felt. So you can actually get away with heal botting more than I think you should. Both Kiriko and Moira are the same for me in that way. They just have kind of different approaches to the same thing. For being mobile, escapable, and good at dueling. Into the A tier, we're going to put Lucio. Uh, the struggle that I see is that you really need your team to know and understand how Rush works. And there's a lot of players even on the Lucio pick that don't know how it works. And what you can't do is heal too much. It's all about repositioning with Lucio. While there's many reasons why he is a must pick in a lot of matchups, if you don't know how to use it or your team, I'm just going to warn you, don't expect it to do more than it could. It's like these other picks above him kind of can hold their ground and easily win a squishy battle and escape the tank battle. Lucio is a high game sense character and we'll need to make some further in-depth guides on how to use him properly. The reason why I warn that is because characters like Winston and Roadhog and a lot of the DPS that are good right now kind of farm him and he doesn't quite have the damage or impact abilities beyond what he provides for the team. So I nearly put him lower, but if you do learn those skills, he would be higher right next to Kiriko. So it sort of depends. If you got Grandmaster Game Sense, I would put him number one, but for a lot of players, he might be a couple tiers lower. If either you haven't mastered speed boosting for the team or if your team doesn't know how to use it. In a lot of cases, it's gonna be better to stand and shoot and interrupt something with a button or a headshot rather than repositioning the team. That's what gets us into the B tier now. Don't underestimate Ana and Brigida's ability to interrupt Roadhog. While yes, he can get cleansed, if you time your abilities properly, you're still going to up trade in that interaction, right? You'll still slow him down at least. Hitting a Brig Flail on a Sleep or Nade as he hooks a teammate can save them from stopping him from shooting or disrupting his aim. Also applying an immediate heal with the Nade or Inspire might throw off his ability to combo with a shot and melee on a lot of targets if the hitbox is right on the characters he's hitting. Because again, remember the way the matchmaker works, you can't expect your team to be even with the enemy's team. Oftentimes you have to actually carry from your position even if it means it's like a weird inefficient battle so the reason why i say that is in some cases i would say these picks are higher depending on which kind of match made game you're in in an even game a more teamwork based playstyle would be good but in a lopsided game where you have to carry you just need to land your abilities better and get more stats yourself and these two picks surprisingly can do that now as the game slows down and there's less dive overall zen and bap have a big area to shine. You might feel Discord is an amazing way to stop a hog from just Wing at your backline, but they're also diveable and don't have as good of escapes as some of the other characters and also not as good of cooldowns as the ones I just mentioned. I would categorize them as teamwork and matchup reliant. At the bottom of the list, we got Mercy. Well, I'm going to tell you, wait for a slow meta to turn up and Mercy's going to come soaring out of the tier list. But for now, when the game is a bit more about impact abilities and there's easier, better supports to escape, Mercy is a bit of a struggle. While if you have a great Farah or Echo map with a vertical cover and a great player that you can stay with, there's a ton of potential there. Flying characters are possibly the most underrated in the game overall, I think. Just talking to my buddy Samito, who's rank one in every role, he's best on Echo, which you would think hitscan characters should just shoot you out the sky. I feel at my level of play, there's a lot of times I can get Farah to just hard carry games because you can play in untouchable positions. With those picks, Mercy is good. It's just that 
The top hit scans right now, I don't think need Mercy all that much. The more you're in a Soldier or Ash meta, Mercy is a lot better. But as we'll see in the next category, the ranged DPS that are key right now just don't really benefit from the breakpoint improvements that Mercy provides. So you just kind of don't need her and she's unnecessary. And I also think there's some characters that are a bit overtuned above her, namely the healing from Kiriko. I don't know why it's so high. I think the devs thought at range you might miss it, but considering Kiriko's healing is higher than Mercy's beam and Mercy has to be really close to do it, I don't understand why Kiriko is allowed to heal across the map and Mercy can't. To me, that's a huge oversight and shouldn't be the case. Because do you even need a Mercy to heal your Echo or can Kiriko do it most of the time? Because do you even need a Mercy to heal your Flyer or Flanker? Or can Kiriko get away with it most of the time? That's something I'd like to change soon. All right, onto the DPS category. Strap yourselves in, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going for it. Yes, I most definitely am putting Junkrat in A tier. And here's why. There is numerous Junkrats in top 500. So the argument that he doesn't work at the highest tiers in matchmaking is baloney. I've been telling you this character is good and metal rank players have been complaining about him the entire time with Overwatch. But Junk's got a ton of important interactions in the game overall, but specifically in this meta. Remember how I said in previous Junkrat videos that CCing a tank is super underrated and just a thing that none of the other DPS can do. And then on top of that, he also has the really annoying rollouts insta-kill combos so in the same way that interrupting a hog hook from the support position helps you helping a teammate survive hog can be incredible and he's just a lot easier to play for most players i feel so investing in junk buy your stonks now okay i did cave and put sojourn here as well in the a tier even though it's categorically true that i would say somewhere between 70 and 90 percent of players do not have the aim to make her the broken pick she is Although if you do have that aim and you're nearer the skill ceiling of the game, she is easily the Giga S tier character. The reason why I am putting confidence in her for the average player is based on what's good in the game right now. If you learn to outplay Hog's angles, and don't get hooked by him. Personally, I feel like just walk towards Sojourns as they're trying to build up rail and hook them every time. That's my experience playing against, let's say the average Sojourn. But if you're better than that, there's no lane or shield to block your railgun on the best tanks in the game. And even the ones that do have shields, you have the mobility to outmaneuver them. And Genji did get nerfed. That's a very important part of this. And the default best flanker that's left is Reaper, who is gonna interact with and against the best tank picks in Kiriko. Shooting Winston, that's easy, but he also can dive in with him. He stands and delivers inside Kitsune Rush, amazing. His ult's gonna go far, but also against the other top tanks that are really brawly right now, Hog and Orisa, well, Reaper has a shift that can outweigh those abilities and high close range damage that actually might be able to kill a Hog, right? So you kind of want a Reaper a lot of the time. Otherwise, the tank probably is just gonna do whatever they want. Into the B and C tiers now, these are really tough for me because the rest of the game right now in damage, it's gonna depend on your skill a lot. I still put Genji probably higher than most people will, but notice that there isn't any S tier damage pick for me because I think all the damage picks are quite limited to the lane that they play and they can influence the small area of the game that they have, but the only broken one is Sojourn if you max her out with her skill. The rest of them are kind of reliable, I feel, and get marked and are just like, let's say balanced, right? Like they don't seem over the top for me. I'm gonna warn you now, if they don't balance the next season well enough and they just nerf Sojourn, Widow's coming out of the woodwork, ladies and gentlemen. I wouldn't put her higher because I'll be honest, I can't hit Sojourn's head when she's AD strafing. Can you? <laughs> Against a lot of other things, the distance Widow can play from and be effective and the sight lines she can use, as soon as Sojourn does get ultimately nerfed and especially in season two, I think Widow's waiting in the wings. And there's quite a few maps that I think you're gonna find Widow's got some pretty good impact because a lot of the sustained damage characters simply can't kill the best supports anymore. Think about it. They go Kiriko or Moira, you run in on them and they're self-healing like Genji particularly. I can hardly kill a Lucio anymore as Genji. Like he cleans up the fight and has a great ultimate, but a lot of characters that need to get in close, I feel just straight up lose to some of the best supports. Like you don't just run them over like you used to, except for the picks at the top of the list. So a lot of the damage numbers or interactions are just a bit too fair for the damage category. And I can't believe I'm saying this, right? Because they got that damage passive. We thought they were going to be insane, but outside of Genji and Reaper, I'm kind of unimpressed unless you have the skill to play Sojourn. Everybody feels very fair and counterable, but I'll try to pick out 
a few points that are going to be particularly good to think about. May Torb and Hanzo have some interesting hog interactions. A recon arrow for your hog can be devastating to the enemy team because it allows him to peek a corner. Remember, something on recon, you can also ping to mark it through the wall even after the recon. So that information can go a long way for your tank. May wall and her cryo freeze can slow down an enemy roadhog and she can survive or save a teammate potentially. But I think it's just a budget version of doing that with Junkrat. Torb with his E can also slow down the game a little bit and survive a hook potentially. Sometimes, I think. But when I look at the B and C tier, it's just really hard for me to pick out something that I think normally outpaces Reaper, Sojourn, and Junkrat for the average player. And honestly, a lot of that is just due to how good Hog is. Like, you need to be able to stand up to him or run away from him. In many ways, I think they accomplished the ability of like fortifying the support position, but maybe for the wrong reasons a little bit right now. That's gonna be it for today's video. Please be sure to check out today's video's sponsor, Surfshark, in the link below. Get your massive discount and three months free because just like we're looking out for you in the Overwatch 2 metagame, Surfshark's got you covered when it comes to the internet. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it a like and don't forget to click subscribe so that you catch our upcoming videos. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for your Overwatch. I'll see you guys next time.